Hi there and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to talk about some of the JavaScript array methods and specifically how we can use them in combination with API response data. Now I haven't done a tutorial of any kind in almost a year now and I also got a new Apple keyboard that doesn't feel quite right yet so you're gonna have to bear with me. Now before we start don't forget to like and subscribe and I'm also working on a little mini series about how we can combine JavaScript and CSS to create some cool things. So stay tuned for that. But now let's write some code. So here we have a friends array that has a very typical API response that contains characters from the popular friends series. Now let's say we are working on an app and we want to be able to find a specific friend based on the ID. How can we do that? Well first let's create a little helper function and let's call it find friend by ID and let's make that equal to an arrow function. And let's pass the ID we want to find to that helper function. And let's log out this function. Uh, find find friend by ID and let's do ID of one and if we clean this up you'll see we have an undefined because our function isn't returning anything yet so what do we have to return well we can start by returning the friends array and we can call the method find because we want to find something now this find method will iterate over our friends array and it will run a callback function for each iteration. So let's give it a callback function to run and we'll make it an arrow function. And we will pass it a friend because for each iteration it will pass a single friend in this case. Now this callback function has to return a true value if our friend meets our criteria. If it doesn't, the function has to return false. To do that, we can just do return friend.id is equal to the id we pass this function and now if we clean this up we should have just the one friend ross which is id number one and since we are using an arrow function we can clean this up a little bit by giving it an explicit return and that should give us the same result now if we change this to a zero and clean this up we get joey by the ID of zero. Another way that we can search through an API response is by using the array filter method. And to show that we have another fake API response here with Star Trek characters. Now let's say we want to find all the characters coming from a certain planet. To do that we can create another helper function called find trekkies by planet. And let's make it equal to another arrow function. And let's pass the planet we want to find. Uh, planet 1n. And let's log out this function. And let's start by searching for characters coming from Vulcan. And that should give us an undefined. Now with our function, we want to return uh, trekkies and we want to filter those based on the planet we want. Now the filter method also accepts a callback function and this callback function will accept a single trekkie for each iteration. And again, we have to uh, return a true value if the trekkie meets our criteria or false if it doesn't. So we can do return uh, trekkie.planet equal to the planet we passed in. And if we clean this up, we should get a Spock and he's a Vulcan. And again, we can clean this up by giving it a explicit return value. And get rid of this. And that should give us the same result. Now let's change, test it and change this to Earth. And we have 
Sue, and we have Kirk, and we have Picard. Another common problem is that we get an API response and it has all the data we need, but the formatting is not right for our app. Like in this example, where we have a simple React app that renders a select control component. Now, if we take a look inside this select control component, we can see that it accepts options as a property and it iterates over these options and it uses the value and label. But our API data doesn't have that label or value. So we have to transform our API response to the data set we need. So let's create another helper function and let's name it uh, transform API categories. And let's make that equal to yet another arrow function. And inside this function, we want to create another array from our API response. And to do that, we can return array.from. And this will create a new array from whatever we give it. So the first argument will be the data that we want to use to create our new array from, in this case, the API categories. And the second argument will be yet another arrow function. And this arrow function accepts a single category. And now we have to return the data for each category in the way that we want it. So we need a label and a value. And these will be equal to the category dot uh, title <laughs> and the category dot ID. And if we log out the results from transform we should now have an object that conforms to what we need. So if we take this function and pass it to our component, the data should be right and we get a list of programming languages. Now these were just a couple of use cases, but these JavaScript array methods can be useful for millions of things, so I highly recommend you get to know them. There will be a link in the description to my blog post where you can find the code examples and the code sandboxes I used. And for now, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Stay safe. Stay the right kind of positive. Bye.